As a frequent flyer, the President of the United States doesn't have time for typical travel nuisances, like baggage fees, and shoe removal, and security lines. But Air Force One makes all that moot. Technically, Air Force One is a call sign given to whatever plane the President is flying on, but it usually refers to one of two highly customized Boeing 747-200Bs. But the way the Commander-in-Chief gets to travel by air is especially different from your average Joe. Today, we're going to take a look at all of the weirdest features of Air Force One. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what other aspects of presidential life you would like to hear about. Okay, if you look at the front of your screen for this helpful Air Force One in-flight video. Imagine you have to fly somewhere for a big business meeting, but uh-oh, a nuclear war breaks out. Curse you, Spirit Airlines. Well, if you were an average citizen, you'd be pretty much screwed. But if you were the President of the United States, you might be able to proceed as planned. How so? Well, Air Force One is more than just a plane. It's also a flying nuclear bunker. The aircraft actually has such heavily reinforced armor that it's theoretically capable of withstanding a nuclear blast. And just to add some other protections, the windows are bulletproof, and its defense system can jam enemy radar as well as deflect missiles and electromagnetic pulses. As one of the most powerful leaders in the world, the president is constantly subject to threats on his life. As such, the designers of Air Force One paid special attention to security risks created by the plane's interaction with airport equipment that isn't under federal government control. For example, getting off most jets means climbing down a set of stairs or ramp that's attached to the plane from the outside. But to mitigate any security risks with airport staircases, Air Force One is equipped with a uniquely retractable set of stairs that extends outward from the body of the plane. For the same reasons, the plane is also equipped with its own baggage loader that allows staff to closely monitor what goes in and out of the cargo hold. These precautions make trying to topple the president by placing a bomb in a set of airport stairs or sneaking one into the baggage loader a non-issue. Anyone who has seen the 1997 film Air Force One knows that the president's plane needs to be prepared for anything, including a mid-air terrorist attack by Gary Oldman. Fire! That results in fistfights and shootouts. When is America going to stand up to Gary Oldman? Should something like that, or you know, a less fantastical medical situation, occur on the president's plane, they'll be prepared to deal with it. That's because Air Force One is equipped with far more than just a first aid kit. The plane has a medical annex that includes a pharmacy and operating table with surgical lights, along with equipment like a defibrillator, IV pumps, and suction devices. Moreover, a nurse is also on board to handle any potential health emergencies. On your average commercial jetliner, running out of a gas mid-flight would be a fairly significant problem. But on most planes that have been called Air Force One, running out of gas wasn't really a concern at all. Why not? Well, as with military combat aircraft, the President's ride in the sky was traditionally designed to be able to keep flying in the event of an emergency or if unsafe conditions exist on the ground. That being the case, these planes had the capability to refuel while in midair. The procedure for midair refueling wasn't exactly easy, but it wasn't terribly complicated either. The way it worked was that a fuel plane would fly into the proximity of Air Force One, match its speed, then connect to provide enough fuel to top off its tanks. While the procedure was well tested, it wasn't completely risk-free, so it was only meant to be used in truly dire situations. Why the past tense here? Well, in a move that stunned politicians from both parties on Capitol Hill, President Donald Trump had the new Air Force Ones designed without this capability. Why? Well, it was part of an effort to cut millions of dollars from the multi-billion dollar budget that pays for the planes. Everyone loves talking on the phone and watching television, and the President of the United States is no exception. That's why the designers of the Commander-in-Chief's plane spared no expense in making sure the phone lines never go down on Air Force One. Okay, that's not exactly true. In fact, the reason they did it is because the plane doubles as a mobile command center and at any time it could be required to help the president run operations all over the world. To this end, Air Force One features nearly 240 miles of electronic wiring, with 85 phones and dozens of TV screens installed. Sure, sure, it's a command center. 
and a sweet spot to watch Sunday football. For most people, eating while in flight usually boils down to a choice between the regular or kosher meals. That is, assuming they're even offered a meal. Frequent flyers will attest that often the menu is limited to a bag of pretzels and a bottle of water, if anything at all. But the Air Force One kitchen is operating at a whole other level. It actually has two food preparation galleys stocked with stoves, ovens, microwaves, and refrigerators. And each flight is capable of feeding over 100 people. On top of that, the chefs who work on Air Force One can make nearly anything the president requests, whether or not it's on the prepared menu. And while most of us eat our airplane food off a plastic tray, the president gets his meals served on China, adorned with the presidential seal. Ever wonder if that person standing in line behind you at the grocery store is actually a top secret government chef, surreptitiously buying ingredients for the president's meals? No? Well, they might be. Yeah, for security reasons, the Air Force One chefs who prepare the onboard meals do in fact go undercover to local grocery stores to purchase ingredients. As an added safety step, they visit stores randomly. Staff also do not purchase any food from overseas. For reasons of security and safety, and possibly also for bragging rights, the President's plane is capable of doing some things that most similar jets simply cannot pull off. For example, while commercial airlines typically fly at around 30,000 feet, Air Force One is capable of getting all the way up to 45,100 feet. Along with its ability to reach great heights, Air Force One is also incredibly fast, even for essentially a passenger plane. In fact, it's able to go more than 600 miles an hour, almost the speed of sound. With 4,000 square feet of space on three levels at its disposal, Air Force One provides a lot more than just a luxury ride in the sky. As previously mentioned, the plane doubles as mobile command center, with state-of-the-art electronics capable of communicating with military operations around the world. In the event of an emergency, the President can issue commands as needed, all from the safety of this flying fortress. But even with all of that, there is a ton of space left over. The plane can also carry the President's entire staff, his guests, and various members of the White House press pool. Getting any plane off the ground is an intricate operation, but getting the President's plane off the ground is a full-fledged military operation. The process for getting Air Force One airborne is literally carried out with military precision. This is to ensure that everything is prepared for the Commander-in-Chief to board. How does it work? Well, first the President is transported via helicopter from the White House to Maryland's Andrews Air Force Base. Next, the plane and runway are inspected by members of the Air Force to ensure their safety. Finally, the Air Force transports the President's motorcade to the waiting plane. It's a lot to go through, but when your passenger is the most powerful politician in the world, the precautions are all necessary. When flying, the President never flies alone. In fact, Air Force One has a hefty wingman with a super badass name. The, the Doomsday, Doomsday plane. plane. The President's ride is typically accompanied by a Boeing E-4B that can stay in the air for days and remains on constant alert in case of a nuclear threat or national emergency. Staffed by military analysts and strategists, the Doomsday Plane is a flying strategy room where military analysts and strategists can execute orders and coordinate actions on the ground. According to the Air Force, the E-4B, known as the National Airborne Operations Center, is protected against the effects of electromagnetic pulse and includes nuclear and thermal effects shielding. So you might be wondering, hey, if I could manage to get a ride on Air Force One, would I be able to snag a seat next to the President? No, you can't. You definitely can't. Air Force One has assigned seating for everyone aboard. To ensure the safety of the President, it's understandably best to know who's who and where they are at all times. In fact, along with the President's staff, nearly half the seats on board are already reserved for Secret Service agents and members of the press. Guests of the President do get to sit in a VIP area close to the front of the plane but for security reasons, others can't walk forward beyond their own seat. As you might imagine, a flight on Air Force One is not a budget travel experience. Not even close. According to some estimates, it costs at least $206,000 an hour to operate the plane. What does all that money pay for? Well, expenses include fuel, state-of-the-art communications equipment, maintenance and upkeep, gourmet food, and salaries. 
not only for onboard staff and pilots, but also wages for Secret Service members and other presidential employees who were on the clock while aboard. In truth, Air Force One isn't a plane. It's actually two planes. This is because all modes of transportation go out of commission sometimes for maintenance or repairs, and one of the most important vehicles in the entire country is no exception. So when Air Force One is down for repairs, its twin is always available to get the president where he needs to go. The president is unlikely to notice the difference though, as both Air Force One planes, which are housed at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland, are equipped with the exact same features. So what do you think? What's the most impressive Air Force One feature? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.